Welcome to the Scale Model Podcast. In this podcast, we aim to entertain, inform, and promote the hobby of scale model kit building with interviews, reviews, and news about the hobby. The podcast is available bi-weekly where your favorite podcasts are found, including iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can also get it from our website at scalemodelpodcast.com, where you can find show notes, photo gallery, and so much more. You can also subscribe to get notifications on all our updates, new episodes, and video content. Please support the Scale Model Podcast on Patreon. Patreon supporters enjoy early access to content and exclusive contests. Your Patreon support helps us to offset hosting and other costs to bring the podcast to you. Welcome to episode 139 of the Scale Model Podcast, sponsored by Cult TV Man, Sean's Custom Model Tools and Return to Kit Form. I'm your host, Stuart Clark, and I'm once again joined by... The man, the myth, the legend from just north of Lake Lake Erie on the North Shore, currently working on a 747 as we speak. Mr. Jeff Highland, how are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I'm slagging through this beast. It's been a real challenge. So th- the downside of spending 20 bucks on a used kit at Heritage Con is that half the pieces aren't in it. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, you know what? I was I, I was there with you, so I, I should have said something. I should have said, check the box, check the box. I looked in the box, but I mean, you can't see everything yeah, in one I quick know. glance in the That's box. That's all right. That's all right. Anyway. All right. Anyway, and the other, the man, the myth, the legend, the man that goes to three hobby shows in six weeks, gets concussed and lives lives to tell about it. President of IPMS Canada, president of our local club, um, slave to she who must be obeyed, our sergeant at arms, Mr. Frank Donati. Thank you, Stuart. Gentlemen, good evening. Glad to I be think, here. I think I was accurate in all that. I hate yeah. him when Frank's on this podcast because all of a sudden he's like Mr. Suave Debonair, you know. Oh, you know, I'm not the. This is not the Frank you're used to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I it's will okay. give you the full Frank experience tonight, Jeff. Just like our club meetings and 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 when we're together. Well, in the club just meetings, be- we we do record the club meetings, so you know yeah. people can have the option of seeing Frank when he presents. Just so. be Frank, Frank. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. First of all, we want to dedicate this episode to James from Just Making Conversation. Little bugger had himself a heart attack oh, about a couple of days ago, but he's doing well. He's going to be in the hospital for a week, and he's been replying to emails. So, uh, you know, for anyone who's thinking about circling around his stash, it's not going to happen. So he's going to be he's going to be just fine. So, but anyway, we do hope him all the best. All the other podcasts have been saying that. As well, don't forget, thank you to all our Patreon and Buy Me a Coffee supporters. We have a list of the What We Like page of lists of what we like. I got to add some more of the books, what we're reading. We always end up with new ideas to grow our reading list. We've had a few uh, We've had a few uh, emails about that. Okay, Frank, you went to Amps too, and you got concussed. Let's hear the, uh, let's, let's, let's hear the story of both Amps and the concussion. And I think so, we need to really hear the full story about the concussed because no. that, that could be read in so many different ways. <laughs> well, I, I went to Amps Nationals in South Bend, Indiana back uh, last month. Oh, my the first, fighting Irish. Yeah. First time uh, ever been to uh, an amp show. Uh, so it was uh, it was quite the experience. I did go with a bunch of the, the uh, degenerates I hang out with. In, uh, from our podcast, uh, our podcast, the Modeling Insanity podcast, yep. we were actually broadcasting like you do at Heritage Con. We were having that set up down at Amps. So it was first time that all five of us got together in real life. And I did, uh, I shared an Airbnb with, uh, it was nine other guys to make cool. it affordable. And um, yeah. yeah. I was just going to say, I, I do recall there was one Facebook post where, you got you were there was a comment and i don't know if it was uh, you know exaggerated or not but something about 60 people for a party on saturday night at the b&b yeah no that was friday <laughs> night <laughs> <laughs> okay all right there you go <laughs> uh yeah no we ended up that that airbnb so what happened was is uh, i was in there and then uh, our podcast joined us the, the gang we got together after dinner and then uh the the posse showed up and more people came and we ended up with about 65 people at the at the house until somebody called the owner he turned on the cctv and uh our, our what the hell's going on our house <laughs> dad got the everybody out of the pool <laughs> yeah i wondered <laughs> that was my first company my, my wife's first comment was aren't there rules about not having parties at b&b's but 
was it a party? It's a bunch of, you know, 40, 50 year old dads for the most part, right? Yeah. White, white shoe, white running shoe dads hanging out. Um, Let loose for a weekend. Ta- yeah. Not just supervised. Talk, really talking models. I mean, like, yeah. like that, whew, it got I did wild. See, I did see some pictures of some pretty incredible models on the kitchen tables. So that's pretty, that was pretty impressive. So, so being an amps show, it's, it's armor. And so what we did the night before we all brought our, our kits in was uh, uh, one of the guys, BJ DeBecker from Panzer Concepts. He's been an AMPS member for 30 years. So everyone pulled out their kits and we did a pre-show judge to see defects, faults, things we could fix. Uh, you know, I had I had a piece of photo etch that was kind of shiny and, and I started like I was kind of chasing it for a while and then I got it fixed the next day just before I submitted it for entry. But we went through this stuff um, for everyone to kind of critique and see and, and compare, right? And really prejudge before we went to the show, which yeah. was fantastic. And you know, we've never seen each other's work in real life, so it was it was it was uh, a great experience and it was bonding because we, we're all seeing what we like and what we love. Um, Amps itself smaller than IPMS uh, Nationals, which I've never been to, but I will. I think there was 685 kits in total entered. Wow. Um, I really went to go and understand the judging because as we've talked about, right, we're looking yeah. at doing the GSB method also. Mm-hmm. And I can definitely say that like IPMS shows, judging is is the bottleneck. Um, you know, you need a lot of judges. You need quick judges. You need trained judges that know what they're doing because the AMP system, I do like it with points and, and how how it works and best out of you know best three out of four move forward and all that stuff but um you know on like on on uh i think it was saturday morning there was still like almost 300 models in the judging area because Hmm. when they come in they go to this back room and then they're brought to the judges by runners they're assessed all the paperwork's taken care of and and the paperwork aspect of it was phenomenal that we registered online you printed everything out. They double checked when you got there. Um, everything went into a system. It was really well. I mean, these guys it was not their first rodeo. They did a fantastic job. Cool. The quality of the work was world class, without without a doubt. I I judged. I judged on three separate occasions. Um, our first uh, captain was phenomenal, and I, I did it with a couple of guys I know. We had an amazing time, and and so the judging, I enjoyed it, but. It is go, go, go. Um, but I went with the philosophy, which uh, the guys who I was with and, and the ACJs I was with, which is, you know, you're looking at the kit and you're not looking to take away. You're looking to build up. So what is it with this kit that's really well done? What is it that is, you know, making it stand out, making it worthy of, of comments? So positive feedback was encouraged. Every, every judging sheet I did, I put something positive. Because there was no model that was truly awful or bad. Without they, they all had really redeeming qualities to them that you wanted to point out and give someone a pat on the back. Um, I did almost quit the hobby on three separate occasions. Um, <laughs> once uh, BJ pulled out his Gamma, which is a World War One artillery piece that he made. He created the resin castings. He made this giant First World War artillery piece, and he pulled it out. And he ended up winning uh, People's Choice at Amps Nationals. Richly deserved. It's an amazing build. Yeah, I saw the pictures. Absolutely he, amazing. He made it and sold it. And I asked him, he said, he sold 50. All 50 that he made were sold. I said, how many are built? He goes, besides mine, he thinks three of them have been built. Wow. And I'm like, I would, I, 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 I'd love to build it. I mean, it's, I don't know if I could do it the same justice he did, but uh, fantastic. And then... Um, I got to do a, one of my favorite vehicles, an SU-122-54, um, which is a Soviet post-World War II tank destroyer. And it was 148 scale, and it showed up, and I was just, this is a 10 out of 10. Like it, right. I, I, As soon as you see it, it was coming. There was light around it. It was glowing. Uh, mm. It was an incredible build. The figure, the, the, the everything, the base, the plinth it was on outstanding outstanding work then our chief judge goes you know that's on the cover of uh, boresight magazine 
And I'm like, get out of here. He goes, yeah, yeah, it's, you know, they've got copies over here. And, and it was. And when I read the volume, and this was after judging, when I saw all the work needed on that, it was a horrible kit. It was, it was poorly cast. The bottom wasn't done. Anyway, we gave it a 30 out of 30. It was perfect. It ended up winning Best in Show. Stan Spooner mm -hmm. made it. He is now an Amps master for winning Best in Show. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually saw a couple of his kits. I judged a couple of his kits. And uh, that's not a title that uh, uh, he, it's a title he deserved. I, it was incredible work. And it's, it's, it encouraged me to work harder, right? And, and, and try to get to that level myself. It was a wonderful experience. Everything was armor related. So I was like an uh, undiagnosed ADHD, OCD child running <laughs> around. The raffle was incredible. Um, the vendors were really good. Uh, you either you either were paying retail, not not often, and or or less than retail. But uh, the variety of products. I came home. You've seen the pictures. I came home oh, yeah. with yep. a ridiculous amount of stuff, including yep. raffle wins, which which was um, wonderful. People, it's very intimate because everyone's got the same likes. It's all armor guys, right? We all come from that right. same common denominator. Um, but, uh, I'm engaged now, um, with, with our moving towards GSB, I, I believe we will be able to do it. It'll be a yep. bit of a challenge, but I'm ready. Um, I like it sounds, it, it, sorry to interrupt you, Frank, no. but I was thinking about this as you were saying it. it, it sounds like, um, GSB is something that, that ties well to a multi-day show, but maybe not so much to a single day show. Because just it sounds like a lot of time, if, it, particularly it, if you don't have enough judges. Well, it, it, it the key comes down to the judges and speed. I mean, look, I've done enough models. I've done enough shows. I can judge pretty quick mm -hmm. because, I mean, if you look at the grid that you judge on, it's, you know, it's the scope of work. That's pretty easy. Most of us will know what we're dealing with. You know, when you see something like when Mike Hill puts a kid in, your scope of work is going to be, you're going to give them a full point for that because you know it's going to be some bizarro vacuum form from 1942 that nobody else <laughs> in the world has ever built and he'll make right. it look fantastic. Right. Um, so we know that stuff. Um, seeing the kits before they go on. So basically judging them and then moving them onto the tables. Remember that our show isn't that big. Um, when you look at something like IPMS nationals, it wouldn't, you couldn't do it. It's 3000, yeah. 4,000 kits. You can't do it. Um, but for, for us, uh, I think, I think we have enough manpower, knowledge and capabilities in our club and we get support. Hamilton always has a few guys come down. Yeah. Uh, you know, we can, we can cast a net and get some of our, 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 uh, our, our people in the know to come and help out. And I believe we can. And mm -hmm. what I like is, is judging a model based on the model and nothing else, but it's being judged against itself. Now, with respect to the, the concept of the time element, is it, um, and cor correct me if I'm wrong, I thought with the thing with the uh, um, gold, silver, bronze, um, it, is that every model gets like a critique or you get like comments on your build. So it's not like where you can just go back and say, okay, there's 10 models here. Right away, I can tell all but three of them are out you know, of contention. Yeah. yeah. And and now it's just a matter of rearranging those three as to figuring out which, which one they're in. Mm -hmm. um, that isn't like, you, you can't do that in a gold, silver, bronze, because you really are looking at every kit. Yeah. And you, as you say, you're comparing the kit against, against the kit. I think yeah. if you go, I think if you have a, a clear grid on what you're looking for, there's a lot of, let's say, fill in the blank. And there might be something in terms of the individual critique you know, there'll be some standard stuff, which is almost like a checkbox, you know, seam or decal slivering. So, yeah, I, I, I think as Frank says, I think if it's organized well and we have enough bodies and we have clear instructions, I, I, I think we can pull it off. And don't forget, like our venue, technically, technically, we get our venue the evening before. Mm -hmm. So we could have people bring their kits the evening before and start judging before there's a setup. True. Right. We, True. we, we could work that into the equation because we have security. The place is locked up. It will be safe overnight. And so we could actually start with the judging on the Friday and the critiques. You're right. Right. Let's be honest. I mean, 
thumbprint. How long does it take to put thumbprint on windshield? Mm. It, it, you know, that's, you know, thumbprint on windshield paint job, though, really nicely done. Otherwise, there's mm. your positive. There's your balance. Right. But everyone's getting more. And, and sometimes, you know, you could even say something. If there's something that you really want to talk to someone about, come see the judges table. Right. Mm -hmm. Come see us when you have a moment and and uh, do that also. I right. used to get I used to get in trouble when I when I had, when I turned in an essay and then they said come see me that was never good. Yeah, nobody wants that, right? I nobody hate when my wife that. texts me. Should, can you come over here, please? Yeah, <laughs> oh, oh. man. Um, but mm. should, should I know, be armed? Yeah, it, I'll tell you. It's it's I've 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 never been to a multi day show. And and uh, nobody brings in nobody brings in a lot of models on the Thursday evening when it starts. Um, you know, the tip to me was br start bringing your models in once the judges have been warmed up for a bit. That's one of the challenges is they feel the judges need to be they're either too harsh or too lax in the beginning a little bit. So give them some time to warm up. Um, but, uh, um, you know, you need an intake process. You need runners to move the stuff back and forth. Um, logistically. How does that work with the IPMS no pickup rule? Well, the thing is they're picked up they're, they're going to be picked up now if it's on a base and it's not connected you got to put a you have to indicate on your sheet not attached to base uh -huh, and okay. we have we have we have adults who will wear gloves and move your model with appropriate care and then yeah. they also have trays as well yeah well the thing is everything's on a mcdonald's tray remember the mcdonald's trays from 1975 the little ones yeah yeah okay. yeah so everything's on a mcdonald's tray it comes to your table there's a light at the table there's a flashlight at the table, but there's actually uh, just a, a table, a desk lamp and a little turntable. So what I was doing every time a model showed up is we put it on the turntable and then I would slowly rotate it to give us all a 360. How about the large, how about the large, really large dioramas? Out on the floor. You do it on the floor. Yeah. Do common yeah. sense. Common yeah. sense. Yeah. Common yeah, sense. sense. And then display only, I think was great. Uh, um, there was some, you know, Rob Riv did a display of his painted and naked models, just so you can see just how impressive his naked models are. Cause I mean, they are spotless, right? There's, there's no, there's not a single blemish on, they are absolutely pristine. Now, now uh, we are talking about the models, not Rob naked, right? Yeah, that's not pristine. Okay. Just making sure, <laughs> just making sure. I'm still trying. Look at me. I'm rocking now. It's so traumatized. I, know. Sorry, I noticed. I noticed. Oh, um, of us. you know, it's like the Europeans when we talk to the to the Brits about their SIGs, right? I'd, I'd love yep. more SIGs. I know for AMPS, uh, for IPMS Nationals, Jeff Hearn's trying to get, he's got 5,500 square feet put yep. aside just for display. Yep. So yeah, um, I, think, I think he's going to fill it. Yeah. And so um, it was good to see. Have you cool. been following uh, Jeff's latest posts about the hotel situation? Oh, he's a trooper. <laughs> he's a trooper, that guy. A hint That's of sarcasm. Amazing. Hint of sarcasm with frustration. A so, hint? I know. You know I did that my guy. part. Someone buy I, that man Buy that man a beer when you're there, Frank. So uh, I, I brought him 18 beers, to be exact, because uh, uh, he was a housemate at Amps. So oh, good. I brought him a six of Puppers, a six of Sleeman's, and a six of Rickard's Red. Good for you. Oh, there you go. Well yeah. done. Well done. Well done. Well done. All righty. So let's just get right into those hobby announcements. Not much in the mailbag. Um, because Frank's here, I also included quite a bit of armor. Thank oh, you. But no. we're going to start Please. out with, I know. <laughs> we have to keep them happy. But let's let's start out with a little bit of a mix. So Trumpeter's announcements. They've got the one big 116 scale, which is the new, the new thing. You too now, Frank, can get a... Panzer Panzer Six SD KFZ 182 Tiger Two, the Porsche the Porsche early production vehicle in a monster full interior. one sixteenth full interior for three hundred and twenty five bucks from Hobby Link Japan. Three hundred twenty five US bucks. Let's yeah. be clear. Yeah, look at the size of this monster, but it's got a lot of full you know full interior detail. The engines like just absolutely gorgeous. Ton a ton of decals. Uh, Five hundred. 50 centimeters in length, 18 in width, 1,500 parts, metal copper cable, steel tube, pin springs, 40 sprues. Frank, what do you think? You know what? I want to want. I want to do 116, but I have one kit, and I'm just. It's just not working for me. It's I, freaking I, huge. It's it's huge, but 
if I mean, if it showed up on the doorstep, I'd build it. Of course. Yeah, I would. of course you would build it. But would I go and seek it out? Nah. The thing's it's, huge. Yeah. I, I'm just, I, I'm still got that stug from two years ago that I've, I, I haven't even really yeah. started yet. And, yeah. But you know, you know, it will sell. Yes. I'm curious though. I, I'm curious though. Why Frank? I mean, uh, normally you would think more is bigger is better, but I, in this case, the sense I'm getting is no, you, you kind of lose some of the charm of, uh, of the smaller build of the one, yeah. even 135 isn't small. Yeah. They, they, they take, they, it, it takes up a lot of room. The cost is a little bit prohibitive, Yeah, but uh, I, I mean, I, I, part of it is you can super detail it. Um, the kits for the most part that come out are pretty good, but it's just, uh, it's just so big and yeah. I'm, I, I'm just not that interested in it. I, I think, you know, with the smaller scales, I have some leeway to, to, to put some, to, you know, if you, I just think if you screw up, you can really see it so you can hide better when it's smaller scale, but it just, <laughs> it just doesn't, it doesn't appeal to me. It's just, it's, it's monstrous. I wouldn't know where to put it after three or four kits. You know, I got I'm a guy. Almost, yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, I'm almost wondering and now that I think about it, cause you're right. I mean, it is big and it is hard to hide, hide, uh, things that are potentially maybe not what you want to show people but at the same time i'm almost wondering if you need like different techniques uh to do a what to weather or to do uh to paint mm -hmm. or, or deal do, get get that get a, a scale suitable finish on something that's twice the size of what you're normally working with would yeah. be a bit of a challenge i would yep. think yep, it yeah it would be oh, yeah, yeah. And, so. and think anyway. about you know, like think about those guys that do the 350 ships. I I have a couple now, but we we had one guy that showed up at our club, and he's got like a dozen of them, and they take up all the space on his walls. There's just yep. there's only yep. so much. Yep. Room I know. That, that, well, that, that, speaking that. of speaking of 350th, yeah. uh, Trumpeter is also master of the segue. Here we go. You like that? Yeah. Trumpeter is yeah. also releasing a 1350th, the USS Midway CV41. This is in her World War II configuration. So it began construction of 43 and entered service um, in 45, just as Japan was surrendering. Um, so, and it was basically, uh, you know, it was around until 1997 when it was finally struck. And in 2003, it was converted into a museum ship. So quite a number of uh, parts of this, lots of gorgeous decals, 84 centimeters in length, 15 in width, 1200 parts. 37 sprues, a lot of photo etch, one piece part of the hull, so that's nice at least. Um, the aircraft wing includes F4Us and SB2Cs, complete ship and aircraft detail sets. It was funny, I was listening to um, On the Bench this week, and the guys were talking about, you know, some of these bigger ships, and it's like quite often with these, with, with the exception of Ian, which he fully admits, um, a lot of these 350th carriers, you know, you might build one, and once you built one, you said, okay, I've done it, you know, again, for the same reason. For the room and stuff like that um but if you're in a to a particular carrier class like if you're into the midway class you know this looks awfully nice look at all the photo etch that comes with it oh no yeah no interior no um hangar deck no obviously. but you know you have enough photo etch to keep you busy on the exterior well, I'm just I'm I'm looking at uh, knowing your 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 love of photo etch I'm looking yeah, at I know that it looks like the stern and mm -hmm. it has one, two, three, four, five, six, eight yeah. anti-aircraft like double oh, bolt for guns or whatever. I on know. The back. I'm shuddering looking at that. <laughs> I still think I still think the one that really gave me the shakes was the one that comes with the Akagi. There's a photo etch detail upset that comes with the Akagi because oh. uh, that was a conversion ship, and some of the stuff there is just just unbelievable. Like, are, yeah, are you talking about the original Akagi, the three deck one? Yeah. Well, yeah. no, this was the one decker, but they okay. the photo etch obviously when they had to modify it. Yeah. They modified, they had to modify, and some of the photo etch that comes with that as an aftermarket set is just, you know, with girders and construction, and, you know, it just, like, holy cow. Anyway, yeah. this is available. This will soon be on sale through Trumpeters Distributors Worldwide. Very okay, nice. a couple, couple of things for Tamiya. Um, so three items here. Look, Jeff, a, pterodact a pterodactyl. I saw that. I knew that. I knew you were going to say something. One three fifty. Well, I also like the second one that you might like, a full view clear Mercedes Benz three hundred SL, where you know, the body's it, clear. It's fun, but I've never been a fan of the clear uh, plastic body kits because it's they're so hard 
to, it's so hard to do the gluing process in a decent way without, you know, wrecking yeah. the plastic. Yeah. Yeah. It's still a good, a good subject for that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure someone will love and it. And then for Frank, a Panzer IV, Aus G early production with the motorcycle set. Yeah, shake and bake, baby. Shake and that, bake. To me, as like me, that. Uh, yeah, shake but and bake. that's what's so good about easy. Them. Yeah. <laughs> so that's you know, hey, that's always that's always good. Now uh, going from shake and bake to insanity, we go from Tamiya to mini art. Mini art. So a lot of stuff from mini art. So again, in the category of what haven't they covered yet? Oh yeah, let's cover some captured Czech uh, Hetzers in May forty-five because we have, no one's done that yet. And you've got, looks like they've got four. So they were Jag Panzer 38Ts that were liberated by the Czech resistance in the Prague uprising uh, from Snowman models. So yeah, that's, got, you, you skipped over mini art. Yeah. Oh, did mini I really? Art's the you did. Sorry, I'll get. I'll come back to the Stuart. Thing. Of all the of all the kits, I, I know that I you know. Should, you missed. You missed the one called Stuart. I was excited about the you know the 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 resistance one because you know <laughs> who else but who else but you know would snowman models or mini art do this anyway we'll we'll focus on them we'll go to the steward okay sure, you sure. about that okay sure. we have a head sir we have a head sir if you wanted to do this head sir academy had a kit it's it's not super it's more challenging to find but I like the fact that this one has four varieties uh, of yeah. that head sir. yeah historical I like it. I, I, yes. Frankly, and looks yeah. like, looks like one was in a, <laughs> looks like one's in the museum in the mid seventies. Looks like it was put in there. So again, they're trying to cover everything, right? A little bit of everything. The decals are, you know, with all the graffiti on. And I do like the graffiti. I really think that's kind yep. of fun. Some slight changes to each machine. So they did some research. Uh, you got some uh, photo etch. You got some 3d printed parts. Yeah. Kind of cool. Very mm. specific topic, very specific thing. Okay, now we'll go on to the mini art, one thirty fifth M three Stewart early production with a full interior, <laughs> and, and includes well, one of the Mark Seven marking choices is General Patton with his personal tank. I didn't know he had a personal Stewart tank. <laughs> what do you think, Frank? I well, as the new owner of not one, not two, but three mini art full interior sets <laughs> thank you amps um <laughs> I, I i already have an m3 kit that i happened to pick up recently from a friend of mine for a good price Stuart. um <laughs> i know this is this is going to be a great tank i'm not it's not something that i would probably run out to get but i mean it's probably going to have this mini arts just <sighs> Either number one, number two now for model makers for me in armor. Uh, it's them and RFM are, mm -hmm. are outstanding. So whatever they're coming out with right now, and, and it's, it's amazing. Uh, it will be, I am positive, a fantastic kit. So yeah, uh, would I build it? Of, duh, of course. Um, it looks exceptionally cool. I, I always find the challenge with these interior kits. You really have to have a way to... You know, so you can remove the, the top hull so you can show the insides or, you know, do the stack dis wedding cake display, as I call it. But what's nice about the Stewart is it's got those massive uh, 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 viewports on True. the front True. and, and and you know, the commander's hatch. So it has large openings to begin with, mm -hmm. which I think, and especially when you look at like where the driver is, it's got, a, he's got, a, you know, he's got a, a hatch on the front on the glacis and his own view hatch. So it really opens it up and lets light in. Yeah. So you can see the details, which will definitely make it look cool. Yeah. Well, some gorgeous renders here. I'm looking at the, the, uh, the render of the interior and it looks like there's like a, a steam radi radiator in there. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. It's a, I see it, I see it yeah. right there. Yeah. It's right yeah. in the middle of it. I wonder that's if that's so the weird. transmission. It might be the transmission. It's an odd trend. No, I mean you look further up. It it, it actually oh, looks like I see an up, behind. An up, yes, you're right behind yeah, the driver. Right yeah. beside an oxygen well, bottle or okay, something. Okay, that, that that'd be good. That that'd be good in Northern Europe in December of '44. Not as good in North Africa. I was going to say great in North Africa. Perfect. Yeah. Well, anyway, it was, it, that immediately attracted my attention. That looks very steampunky to me, as opposed to World War II. -y, but well, if it's a British tank, then that's where they would make their cuppa, right? That's a where cuppa, the tea's exactly. made. You got to put it on top of the radiator. Yeah. That's very important. 
You know, even steam engines were designed to have a little plate above the firebox so they could put the kettle. Very important. So you gotta, that looked, you gotta love the British. You, you gotta, gotta you gotta love that. Okay, another full interior kit in one thirty fifth from Mini Art, the eight by eight Puma, the SD KFZ two thirty four, the Panjerspa wagon. Is that how you pronounce it? From Mini Art. Uh, what do we got? Six different schemes, full interior. We got some CAD renderings here. Again, another popular kit. Have you ever built anything like this, Frank? Uh, not a Puma. I would like to build this kit. This would be really cool. I've done a couple of recce vehicles, but yep. never a Puma. It was just, you know, Dragon made a good kit, but I never found one. And uh, uh, we talked about that recently, right? Like I, 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 I kind of either prefer to go to my local store mm -hmm. or to a show because we get raked over the coals for shipping in this country. Yep, so oh. it, it's that's why I go to shows, right? Is really, I, I don't build to compete. I build to shop. <laughs> I know. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But, and well, and some gorgeous looking marking schemes, including some with the extra radio antenna there. Yeah. And I'm positive. Some guys will come out with like to make the stummel, which is the open top with the, the short 75. Yep. Mm. So there's some variations on on the base on the base chassis, basically changing the armament and whatnot. So I can see the aftermarket populating to make this kit. Like it'd be worthwhile to have. Yeah, you know, I have to tell my wife to get a couple of these for me. Of yes, course, exactly. Yeah, Why of not? all the German of all the German armor, this one actually is uh, does does intrigue me. I've always yeah, liked this. I like vehicle. that kit. Yeah, exactly. Okay, on to another one sixteenth subject. Uh, I love kits coming out with a 116 Sherman because, you know, everyone else is doing one. This is the M4A1 late medium tank, 208 US from Hobby Link Japan. So, again, another big kit, a couple of different markings. Uh, looks would like this three. Be a, would this be a holy roller kind, like kind of candidate? Mm, I'm not sure, possibly. I'm not as familiar enough with the. Uh, Specific Different model of the Holy Roller was that was a tank we have here in London, in one of our parks. It it came ashore on D Day and it made it all the way to the surrender of Germany, the only one in its division that did it. Um, yeah. That was an A two, Jeff. It was an M four A two, not an A one. Ah, okay, there you so, go. So, but you know what? There's a website um, where they talk about how to make every kit into every type that you want. So like yeah. uh, a list of what it would need. So it would, I don't think this would be a, a, a huge conversion to get it into an A2. Well, I'm looking I, at, look at the sh I, I look at the cover picture and I immediately thought of the Holy Roller. Mm -hmm. Just the shape is Sherman, right? So yeah. that's right. Yeah. And right you look at the mind. detail. Um, they've got the cast armor detail looking quite nice. Yeah. And that scale, they better. Wow. Just, yeah, huge. Well, I just remember when Andy's Hobby Headquarters, he was, they were selling a lot of one sixteenth subjects when we were there. I wonder what going to do a one six one sixteenth mouse. <laughs> there, you, there you go. You can basically drive it to work. You have to you have to be careful because you have to be careful when you're making those because they generate their own gravity. <laughs> no oh God! Just saying. Lovely. All right, hot on the heels, and I know Mister Goldfinch will be pleased about this. Hot on the heels of Andy announcing a one sixteenth. M113, for, uh, which you can convert to an Australian Army. AFE Club announced an actual Australian Army M113A1, the LRV, 1980 transitional model. So this is a 113, had a churn on, heavily used in the Australian Armed Forces. So we just have I just some... want to point out that obviously this is the Frank Donati episode of the podcast because pretty <laughs> much everything we've seen is either a ship or armor. Well, give it time. So, give it time. We got some aircraft coming. Not to worry. Not to worry. Look, look at this. Actually, so, yeah. I like this vehicle. I like this vehicle too. Yeah. You know, I know you guys talked about it last episode with Andy's one uh, sixteenth M113. Mm -hmm. Yep. That is a one sixteenth kit. I would maybe be interested in, but, only a year or two after it came out, because I think when you realize how many variants of the M113 there are, yeah, that's going to be a lot of aftermarket. Yeah, yeah, like especially like Canadian or even better, the Dutch had so many different types for them. Yeah, um, I that's something. But this kit here, it just looks cool. I would, yeah, I would like this. Very cool. It's going to be that's nice. The kind of vehicle that really cries out for you know 
post-apocalyptic treatment too. Yep, I mean, you definitely. Could, you could have a lot of fun with this thing. Okay, now now to keep Jeff happy, from our friends at Special Hobby, they have a Baltimore bomber going to be coming out in one forty eight scale. Wow! So um, it's being worked. They announced it a while ago, but they did do, do, do an update. And these are all CADs, so yeah. You know, and I know uh, there's a lot of people with with a good interior. A lot of people that like, you know, the twin engine, the Baltimore bomber. It's something I think Terry would like. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but there's some stuff there, some very nice de details wow. there on some of the CAD renderings. So something to wet your whistle there. What was the Baltimore in RAF service? It had a different name. Uh it wasn't Martin Maryland, because that's by Martin, obviously. Yeah. Uh da, 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 someone tell us. I'm sure someone will eventually. Someone will tell us, yeah. Kind of reminds me a bit of the Handley Page Hampton. But same idea, that. same, same yeah. kind of era for that. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to move over to a ship, another ship. Uh, Flyhawks announced the, the 1350th CG63 USS Cowpens 1998 version. So this is a guided missile cruiser that the U.S. had. So this will be big. And with Flyhawk, you know it's going to be just amazing in, 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 in detail. They make just some absolutely amazing stuff. These were um, Aegeus. This is an Aegeus cruiser. It includes the vertical launch system. So, I mean, I, I, the, the link you've got here to BritModelers.com, which talks yep. about it. one of the characters, Flatland Fox, says, thank God this is a dying hobby because I'm spending the family heritage <laughs> in unbillable kits. <laughs> and then put me down for one. Put me exactly. down Exactly. Yep. Oh, I've, built, I've built Flyhawk's armor. They're 172nd. I've built yeah, five or six of them outstanding and i was actually looking like because a lot of guys are like you got to build one of their 700s I, I i think this this is new for them doing 350 but yeah uh, uh, i mean it's not a class that i would be like oh yeah i'd, I'd be interested but I, I i can just imagine how amazing this is going to be because based on what i've built from them already so this well i remember i i remember when jeff and i were at heritage con we there was one uh, table that had quite a few of the 700s and just looking at the parts count and the quality just blew us away. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. But this ship is, it has a very elegant line to it. I love yep. the, the bow. I mean, it's just. Yeah. Very, the Aegeus were very, a very unique looking uh, ship yeah. command and control, you know, as a guided missile destroyer. And then you mm -hmm. see in front there between the turret and the bridge, that's the, the vertical launch system there. So. Right. Right. Yeah, that's going to be uh, that's going to be popular, I'm sure. Okay, and the Magic Factory has a Chinese Navy, the People's Liberation Army Navy. That's how they call it, the Type 54B frigate. So uh, this is uh, now this is designed to be cement-free construction. So it'll be interesting to see how the quality looks out, and but I'm sure it'll be pretty good. So. Um, this is the new. This is the newest frigate. Yeah, it's another elegant looking ship. Too. Yeah, launched very and tested nice. in 2023, wow. so very new. Um, so yeah, pre-colored parts too. Yep. Well, so this is a CAD form. <laughs> yep. But again, if you don't want to paint it, you can just throw it together. True. Uh, but these are click style parts do not require cement. You can use glue, um, but the kit's designed to go. Uh, without it if you want so that's going to be coming soon so we're just gonna we're gonna have to wait and see and see what some of the reviews um save say for it because you know i've heard good things they're building that a4 skyhawk too so you know that's a popular one okay on to a few more planes arma they've got their latest their third release in the 48 scale hurricane no surprise you need to ever get one did you ever get the uh, i got a 48 i got the original 48th one yes you did so, okay. I so have you the need Mark this one. one. You have to yeah. get well, this one. I think I'd rather get the Sea Hurricane. To be perfectly honest, I built the Airfix Sea Hurricane. Um, think of it as a bridge. A between, bridge, yeah. So this is the tropical, yeah. right? So this is the tropical, the Mark Two B. So um, like sand sea. Yep. Basically, uh, no big surprise here. They they said they were going to kind of duplicate what they did with their seventy fifth. Now, what's interesting about this is they're also going to be selling three D files for some of the aftermarket stuff. Um, so they're gonna do it for this for the Sea Hurricane and they're gonna do it for this. So it's not the entire kit, but if you want certain upgrades, you can actually order the digital files 
and uh you know they consumer will licenses interesting consumer yeah, licenses yeah. yep so they've got cannons masks the pilot seat landing lights like all sorts of things so this is an interesting way of doing it because they have a not, cooler Get they're to not the cooler mm -hmm. sorry they're not going to that's okay <laughs> they're not going to um sell the whole kit as a 3d file that'd be insanity but this is a good idea they don't have to worry about shipping and great idea and if someone's going to you know give a copy to his buddy his buddy has to have the kit anyway you know really it's, it's, it's a very interesting uh I, I hope it takes off i think it's a good way of sort of integrating 3d printing into the mm -hmm. modeling i think it's a good it. model for them so this will be a nice one to come out with yeah and well frankly um i'm a fan of arma ever since i built that oh yeah um, i've got the mark one i gotta i gotta get going on that i got the 70 second scale one which was a, a challenge but it was a great kit and i, I do have the 48th i just have to find some room that's the same old story but yeah, yeah. maybe at some point I'll now, see. now for the next item i really really i really want to hear how you pronounce this one the quailin rue that sounded almost effortless. I'm very blessed. It is, because I know my macros. So <laughs> Hasegawa is releasing a lot of macros stuff. Um, our good friend Peter Fay down at Neo Tokyo pointed this one out and a few other ones. But it just I saw this one, and this always looks cool. So this is a, a brand new tool, the 172nd scale Quail and Rue. So you can match. You can. This is an enemy uh, craft. So you can basically put it, put it beside your Valkyrie. Coming out in June 28th, 2024. 5,800 yen, or you can order it from Hobby Link Japan for 5,136 Canadian. And I'm sure our good friends at Neo Tokyo will have it as well. So yeah, this is very exciting for the Macross people because they're, they're going to be reissuing or doing some new stuff. Um, Hasegawa has got at least two or three different ones they're going to be reissuing. Um, or again, some, some, some new tool stuff in their Macross IP. So very, very exciting indeed. We got to get you to build, 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 build one of these, Frank. Uh, you know, well, I built a couple of Gundam. I actually just built one for my daughter from like one of the kits I won at a raffle just for her. Aren't you but nice? Well, Aren't I, you nice? I, mean, I thought it looked cool. Okay. Uh, I'm actually building one. So, so you like this? Um, right. I got some M1 Abrams. I got a couple of M1 Abrams in 70 second scale, okay. and I've got a Pacific Rim Obsidian Warrior. Oh, cool. So I'm going to make him cutting one of the Abrams in <laughs> half. Full interior. Perfect. Because because I've been watching the Warhammer guys do their glow. Yeah. You know how they're making everything look glowy. Yep. Yep. So I want the blade to cut through and the edges of the tank yeah, of the to glow. look like molten. Yeah. Cool. That'll be oh, fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that. That's an interesting technique. So. That's an that's, interesting concept. That's an August... After all the shows, I'm in my post nationals, you know, coma del delirium. Then mm -hmm. I, I will, I will do that. But th this guy actually looks cool. I like the rider, like the figure inside too. I think that's really yeah. Neat. He's a cool guy. It's a cool, very, very popular subject. Okay, moving on to our good friends at Scalemates. We are recording this on April 29th, so we have April, April 28th. Now, one thing I immediately see, and I'm surprised I didn't see this already. Trumpeter. Is apparently announced an all new tool for 2025, a fairy battle. So for the <laughs> RAF and the British guys, they will be very happy about this because we yeah. haven't had a decent model of the battle in a long, long, one forty eight time. time too. Yep, and then also the twenty seventh, they got the Barracuda Mark II also torpedo bomber in one forty eight, twenty twenty four. They're really going on, going big on ugly planes. I'm well, there you go. Uh, we I, have. A... I got excited by the top of the page. That's yeah. I haven't. Yeah, even I know. Yeah, that. go ahead. Talk about that. A Panzer One Osf B with a Zundap K750 by by Academy, a new tool Mark One Panzer. This is going to be. Is that Academy or Tiger? Is same thing? No, it's Academy. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Tiger is a little bit below. They've got that Panzer, uh, the Tiger coming out. Okay. Yeah, oh, your yours must you, be. You must have a slightly different listing than I do. Hang yeah, because I have Tiger One from Tiger Models. Yeah. Five. Hit two. refresh, gentlemen. There we go. Oh yeah, they must have just refreshed. Okay, there we go. Panzer One, and the bunker. The bunker knacker. How can you not start with that? The SDKF said a bunker knacker, three D print, 
one seventy second scale. Looks like an eighty eight on a half track. But it's it's a three D print, and I'm not going to hold my breath. <laughs> okay, but it says bunker knacker. Like, what but it is a want? bunker knacker, which I yeah. like. So yeah. Um, okay, going down the list now. So if we go to the twenty seventh, a couple of things that that your son may be interested in: a ballast Medusa from Warhammer. Uh, Hermes Sentinel Squadron look like little walkers. They look cool. Mm -hmm. They look uh, like junior adats. Yeah. Uh, Le Arsenal has a lot of uh, French submarines in both 400 and 700. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. <laughs> How about this thing from Speedo Models 118th? I can't, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it. Looks like a UFO with a little gold ring. Oh, uh, looks like a glass ball with a little supporting ring around it. Well, they have, they have three. Galea. They have a yeah. few kits here. Yeah, we got the crab below it. That's called Little God. Little God. Enough. Interesting. Yeah. Oh. And the next one's called Art and Blue Robot Horse. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Translation. We have no idea. We got some trucks from them. And then we've got the 25th couple of uh, Gundam. King yes. Squasher. I like that. 172nd from Milmont, Snow Cats, a bunch of different ones, sleds and Arctic equipment and figures. Good for your dioramas. And I like oh, that. Yeah. Actually, that really intrigues me. Transantarctic kind of stuff. Perfect. And, and then they have something similar on the 24th, Earth Moving Shoveler. Yeah. That's really I cool. I may have to look at that. Yeah. And then they also got a Snow Cat with the forward cap, late type and sled. You remember those? Mm. You see the pictures of National Geographic? Oh, and look, 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 and look what very far has come out with. Oh, one three fiftieth. Yamoto. Yamamoto. 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 <laughs> See, I'm getting it right. Yeah. Yep. All right. And then we got the plane factory. We've got a drone, Ukrainian drone. The Erector. Mm -hmm. yeah. Auxiliary <laughs> surveillance ships. Ooh, April 23rd, a Ferrari Daytona at 124th at SP3. Hmm. And another 135th uh, TACOM, this, in this case, the HPJ-12730 close-in weapon system. Mm -hmm. oh, look at Bandai's Gigantosaurus. I, that's what I was looking at, Gigantosaurus. But Bandai look Spirits. at the close-up. It, it's got the skeleton underneath. Yep, they do that. Very cool. It's one of the part of their educational line. I was going to say, it's, it's kind of like a STEM, like a STEM product. Yep. And then and, I like the, uh, the, the Matchbox knockoffs. Yeah, definitely a matchbox. Oh my God! Yes, Triumph Holy de doodle. Wheeler. Tri Triumph de Wheeling. Yeah, yeah, they look like matchbox boxings, don't they? Oh, Trumpeter is going to do a new tool. USS Montana, BB sixty seven, the battleship that was never built. It's supposed to be the successor to the Missouri. Hmm. And we got a Chinese submarine. How about this? Uh, uh, this is the Israeli, the IDF E10 wheeled APC. This is a fairly new Israeli APC, a wheeled so, armored car. A couple yeah. of buddies of mine that are into Israeli, and I like I like the Israeli aesthetic for mm -hmm. their for their equipment and stuff. This this vehicle has only been in service since May of last year, hmm. so a lot of people don't even know about it. It looks very cool, and it's a Hobby Boss kit, so it'll be detailed. Mm -hmm. Not for the faint of heart, but I'm I'm pretty stoked at either one getting it or seeing someone I know build it because I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to seeing that. I can see it that. is kind of a brutalist looking thing, isn't it? I mean, it just looks mean. Yeah, and, and for and urban combat. About it, yeah, yeah, when you read about it, it's it's uh, very typical. Survivability is key, right? Protection right. of 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 your people, mm -hmm. and I think uh, I think that's it's it just looks cool. It is big. It's awesome. Yeah, one step away from the alien APC. That's basically what this mm. is. Who says okay. Hollywood doesn't uh, influence our aesthetic? Exactly. Mm. Exactly. I like the down the next day from Arc Models. Looks like they've got a mirror with the boosters. Yeah. Oh, energy. Yeah. 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 One to one four four. That'd be a good size for you. Just that's perfect. That's exactly the scale I'm working on to the seven forty seven. There you go. Aircraft. There you go. Yeah. What else do we have here? April 19th, a lot of 135th, 132nd scale. Looks like these are 3D prints, drones yeah. and vehicles. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. Object Object 906, the Soviet Experiment Light Amphibious Tank mm -hmm. by Snake Model. 172? Yep. 
a Browning high powered Japanese schoolgirl. A little armory, Browning high power, you know, carrying a Glock bursting through. At least, you know, at least she's got her knee guards on so yeah, she doesn't scratch her knees. Safety first. Safety first, exactly. <laughs> oh my uh, how about the boys' Mark I anti armor rifle? I noticed that. From Strike Witch's Road to Berlin. Yeah. Similar thing. Then we have go, the, there's going through the archive to find a weapon that not a lot of people know about, eh? Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh 17th alfa romeo the kickstarter c44 from Funbox, a ferrari 296 and april 16th a lot of games workshop stuff was released that day yeah um, drop pods legionnaire starty support spartan assault tanks i was surprised how expensive these things are i mean i know pretty cool but they really have to love it yeah, they seem to be selling, so it doesn't seem to be a problem. Uh, yeah. Clear Prop's going to come out with an F-86 Sabre in 148 scale down on the 15th. Another one, yeah. Yep. And I think that's as far as we'll go, because I think, I yeah, think we're getting down to... that's where we, yeah. we stopped, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, again, lots of lots of cool things. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm thinking back to that Tyrannosaurus Rex, and if you wanted to do a, a realistic one that's in the Natural History Museum, at Christmas time, they've got an animatronic one, um, and they actually put a Christmas jumper on it every Christmas. Oh, Someone knitted a woolly a woolly sweater for it, so he gets his own little woolly, woolly sweater. Isn't that uh, nice? All right. Uh, let's go on to our good friend, who I believe is Steve's enjoying a vacation, just celebrated a happy anniversary with his good wife, Steve at Cult TV Man. So let's see what's happening there. Let's see what's new at Cult TV Man this week, where we feature the Enterprise D, the Aztec decals, the 2024 reissue in 1 to 1400 scale. They're in stock, available to purchase now. Great uh, accessory to make that Enterprise look really, really good. Also brand new and very limited release. Uh, the Mandalorian, the speeder bike, includes Grogu, one twelfth scale from Ravel. As I said, very limited quantities, but they are in stock as of the time I'm recording this. Also new, a 2024 reissue of the Star Trek USS Reliant from Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, the 1537th scale. They've taken the classic kit and given it some uh, updates, bring it more in line. It's currently on back order, but you can join the wait list. And what a deal, $39.98. You can't get much better than that. And also very excited, uh, Rick Steinbeck has released some more... Uh, alternative decals for Romulan and Starfleet ships. And uh, just like the previous two sets he did, he's also featuring a backstory uh, called Carolyn's Story. Parts 1 and 2 are posted on the main Cult TV Man website. Part 3 is going to be added later. But if you like to do something slightly different with your Starfleet vessels or Romulan or Klingon vessels, these decal sheets are an absolute must. Uh, we've also got the Moon Suit Paint Masks from one tenth scale. Uh, from Aztec Dummy, you can pre-order your Jedi Starfighter versus the Droid Fighters, 148 scale from Episode 3 of Star Wars. And they're also doing a reissue of the USS Enterprise in Botany Bay in 1 1,000th scale. So make sure you check all those things out and much, much more at culttvman.com and tell them the Scale Model Podcast sent you. Okay, what's on the bench? So I'm continuing on that CF fifteen. What if um, one minor or well, one minor major quibble? Hasagawa, the engine nozzles, they come in five parts. Like you have to make a ring of five parts. So that's annoying enough. And then of course I had to drop one. And the floor monster, gray part, gray floor. Need we say more? The floor monster has disappeared into hyperspace. So I'm looking for a 3D printer aftermarket replacement. Um, you know, we have guys in the club that have printers and have access. So I'm going to get a pattern and uh, get probably Ron, our good buddy Ron from the club, to, uh, who is a resin printer master. Um, he's offered to pr print, print one up if I can find a pattern for it. So uh, in the meantime, I'm continuing on because it's literally about the last thing you put on. So I'm working on, I made some paper stencils last night, doing going to do the... Uh, Familiar F-15 type camouflage in the back end. And then the front end, I haven't decided how I'm going to do it yet. But same color as one uses for the F-18. That's what I'm working on. Jeff, how about you? Well, I'm working on this uh, 
uh, 747 slash shuttle carrier aircraft yes. that I kicked at a kit that I we talked about last time that I picked up at uh, Heritage Con for mm -hmm. 20 bucks and didn't have the shuttle in it and didn't have any decos and was missing the the uh, the connectors that hooked the shuttle onto the 747. So yeah, a few parts missing. <laughs> now to be fair, the the vendor told me that the shuttle was missing. Was not aware. I, I suspect he didn't even know that it was missing the other things. But mm -hmm. but anyway, I have gone online and I have ordered up a set of decals from uh, Draw Decals in the states or Draw Decals. I don't. No, I'm not. Don't, don't want to get into a fight about pronunciation. I never could figure out what the right way to do it was. Uh, and uh, the their uh, the shipping costs are the same price as the. Uh, the decal sheet, of course, and it's on its way. <laughs> it's about five five times what I paid for the model. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so there's that. And then I needed to, of course, to get um, uh, the uh, the tile decal set for the space shuttle. You know the. Ah, the, yes. the you mean you mean you're not going to engrave it by hand, just like scale scriber? It's one one forty four scale, Stuart. <laughs> I'm not insane. <laughs> Uh, well, some might disagree, but in any event, yeah. So I've ordered. I ordered those the, on the weekend, and yeah. uh, uh, from from. Um, uh, oh, hang on, I'm going to get it wrong. It was Lake County Spaceport? I think it is. That's what you said uh, there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and they're fantastic. The guy was great. I or I ordered it on Sunday, and uh, um, within about an hour, I got a, an email back from him, sort of saying, "Yep, that's great. We we'll send it out tomorrow. What, what kind of shipping charges do you want?" Yeah, Steve uh, Jokums uh, of Lake okay. County Sta Spaceport. So I told him that we were on this podcast and that I would give him a shout out because I'm pretty impressed with the the material. And I'm uh, adding the link. I'm adding the link as we talk. Yeah, and I uh, I recommend it. This guy is this is good service, and it's um, I'm pretty sure from all the commentary that I've heard from others that the the uh, sheets are top quality, and I'm looking forward to getting them because once cool. I have them, then I can start figuring out how it all fits together you know there's a lot of math mm -hmm. <laughs> so but that's what i've been working on that plus the martin mars um our friend uh andrew finnegan at above and below graphics out in bc has uh drawn up a a, a brand new sheet for the martin mars water awesome. bomber by by colson and uh he sent me uh, a preliminary copy of it i haven't got it yet but he sent me the email uh, attachment pdf uh and it's yep. beautiful it's just beautiful. perfect do you ever notice how decal manufacturers are some of the nicest guys you meet in the hobby? Yeah, I, I, I you know, it bugs me sometimes because every now and again you'll see a, see them commenting about some of the flack they get from some customers, yeah. and I, yeah. I don't understand. Neither do I. People who do that because honestly, these guys are doing the best they can. They're yeah. not making a fortune at it, and the quality of the stuff they produce is fantastic. And so, the postal system continually tries to screw them. Yeah, I don't mind the price of the decals. I, yeah. I really don't mind, but I do find sometimes the shipping costs are yeah, which is a shame. Is yeah, and they're not, and 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 they're just passing on what they have to charge. Yep, exactly. exactly. And, and and to be fair, the fellow, the, this fellow uh, uh, Steve uh, at um, at Lake County Spaceport, he gave me a discount because of he was embarrassed at the postal cost. Hmm. So you know, honestly. Well, there I can't, you, go. you can't go wrong I can't, with that. I can't praise the praise them any higher than that. Good for good him. for that. Well, we we have the links here, and we'll make sure they are in the show notes, and we're we're giving a shout out to all of them. So, all right, um, Terry, poor Terry's sick. He caught a stomach bug or something just in this afternoon, but he did mention some progress on my open project. So I'll get the landing gear on the P forty seven and do some minor weathering before dull dull coating. Then I'll probably mostly use pastels for further wetting, wet weathering. I just want the Rajol off my bench, so I need to get the decals on that. Okay, Frank, what about you? You, you of course, build like you have your army of little minions that we're all convinced you have because you build them so quick. I have a sweatshop in my basement. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, I work out Visa cards uh, for them to permanent residents while they build models for. Them. Okay. Good yeah, I have a sweatshop. No, I see that people bring this up all the time. Well, you build so fast. You build so fast. I don't know. I build at the speed I'm comfortable building at. I, and I that just happens to be quicker than most of us. Yeah. I so think I, the difference, I think the difference, Frank, though, is that when you're at the bench, you're actually modeling. Whereas yeah. most of us, when we're at the bench, we're looking at our stash, wondering whether we should probably be spending our time doing something else or reading a magazine or looking Having at a beer, podcast. watching YouTube. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you, you are modeling. 
There you go. Yeah. And so I, I finished a, I, I so got back from amps. I was stoked. I built a Tamiya T55. Run and done, 148 scale, shake the box. It's built. Beautiful little kit. There's like three other guys that were building it at the same time online. So we've all got these beautiful little T55s out there. Um, but then I picked up at Heritage Con mirror models, uh, uh, come, come Somolets T20 tractor. It's a famous little tractor that the Russians had. Um, I'd never heard of mirror models. I think they're Thunder model now. It was like a, a one guy in a garage making model kits. Uh, it's a really nice kit. I started that last week. I painted the interior over the last couple of days, um, just where the engine is and, and the crew compartment. And, and I saw some reference photos where um, it looked like they had like tan fabric on the seats. So I made what looks like tan fabric on the seats uh, just with some tissue paper and paint just to make it look a little bit better. Um, and then, and Stuart understands Mm -hmm. So at Amps, a friend of mine won uh, in the uh, draw. He won a Grad, which is the uh, Ural truck-based MLRS rocket right. launcher, yep. the BM21. And it's the new ICM one. And he goes, oh, here, Frank, you had so much fun. Have another one. <laughs> and, and, who, and, and, and you have to be polite. Yeah. And so... Uh, I was I was bunking another of my housemates, Ian. He's a vendor uh, uh, with Charlie's Hobbies in the States. So Ian, a.k.a. Crack Dealer South, um, had not one, not two, but three mid-90s ICM 72nd scale. Oh, dear. Yeah, all different. Oh, dear. So I come home with four of these, and <laughs> I was I basically I went a little stupid, and I cracked open one of the boxes, and two days later, I've got this ICM BM2412 kit, which I just finished painting. Um, it's a horrible kit. Uh, flash. Parts fit is not too bad. The actual railing for the rockets. If you wanted, if you wanted to go to a show aftermarket or scratch, there's right. It's just too rough. Um, but I just built it for fun and to see what a mid-90s, because Scalemate says it's from 1990Y. So <laughs> they don't know it sometime in the nineties. Yeah. Um, so I have three more of these to do, uh, but I got one done just to see it looks okay. Like I said, it looks a little rough, but, um, but if you like scratch building, I would say go for it. Um, Cause the base kit is, is not too bad. And, cool. and uh, I think I'm going to work on this uh, Komsomolets uh, tractor, which comes with a, an oil container. And then I picked up a grail kit which is the, um, the South Lebanese army, uh, APC. Mm -hmm. So it was a T 55 that the Israelis converted to a Tehran four and then made into an APC for the SLA. Right. And so I picked up some Israeli blue cause it is colored in blue. Um, it's very blue. It's a dozer, uh, on the front too. And it just looks stupid. Cool. Cool. <laughs> and then um, I went and saw Steve Munzel, who runs Value Gear. And um, Steve's another guy. Like uh, he he doesn't want to sell Value Gear to us because it costs more in postage than what he's selling the product for. Yeah. So so yeah. Uh, you know he did tell me uh, it. Look, if you want to order some of the stuff, like get a gang together, we'll make it happen. So, uh, but I bought some of his, um, his, his uh, aftermarket uh, stowage, which is, it's beautiful. It's all cast resin. It's gorgeous. Uh, so I bought a ton of it and this SLA APC is going to look like it's, you know, been to work um, full interior. I'm bells and whistling it. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So, um, it's in Very full cool. mini art, right? So yeah, that's I've just been busy. So you know, I'll have it done next week. Some no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, see, I did notice you did post on your Facebook one day. What should I build next? And I did suggest the hind. Just saying. Uh, yeah. I, so going to nationals. I so remember I said amps nationals. Very armor. Um, yep. I, I want to go to uh, IPMS nationals because I'm in a real Cold War mood. Like yep. I'm, I'm going to buy more T55s. I have two T54s, the APC. I want a couple of T55s, but I want to get decals for 
African and Middle Eastern vehicles mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I'm inspired from some of my reading and stuff. I'd like to do these these tanks from secondary conflicts, third world conflicts. Uh, so IPMS Nationals is Deckel Hunt, um, a little bit of a tool hunt again. I bought some amazing tools that's hard to get up here, um, and uh, and and uh, basically some masks for like the hind. Yeah. Um, I have a Catalina, the PB five, PBY five. That's right. Black Cat. I want to get the masks for that because I'd really, really want to build that airplane. I may have airplanes. to get you because I have one too that you sold me. I may have to have you get a second set. So um, fortunately, the Frank and Bill Express. I am traveling with Bill, two nationals. We've we've teamed up as a dynamic duo to go down. So I'm sure there'll be a few people asking us to look out for stuff. Now, right? now you realize when you go through Chicago, you have to rent a an old an old police car and dress up as the Blues Brothers to pair you. Well, I got to bring a half a pack of smokes, wear sunglasses, and wait till it's five a.m. But That's yes, right. That's right. There you go. There you go. All what, can, what, what can possibly go wrong with you and Bill on the road? You, you know, it's funny. I bought a lot, right? But I'm a college professor and, and I do get a, a couple months off in the summer. Yeah. So I don't care what the weather is outside. No, I, you're going to have fun. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have a great yeah, Good for you. Again. Speaking about the weather outside, I'll just show you what our weather map looks like right now. Oh, dear. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so... Um, we, being out in the country, if my power goes out, we'll know. <laughs> I lose my internet. So we'll know. We'll know. Okay, y- you'll know. Just the, but for our listeners, if I, you don't hear me anymore, that's why. All right, I, I just heard seen... lightning through my. Oh, headphones. okay. I was just looking out out your window there, to see if there's any any flickering yet. Okay, we'll keep going. So, what we're reading, I've got basically the same two books: Clear Thinking and Slow Productivity. So, I really won't say much more than that, Jeff. Yeah, we uh, Lynn, my, Lynn and I, my wife and I, were watching a, an interview show, uh, uh, a Canadian interviewing famous Canadians, and one fellow was a guy named Stephen Pinker, and he's a professor, uh, and he's written a number of books. But one of the books that he uh, that uh, he was talking about was something called "The Better Angels of Our Nature," and it is a basically a a, a survey of history establishing that uh, we're probably living in the least violent time uh, in human history. And uh, explaining why violence has declined, even mm-hmm. though you, if you looked at Facebook or you listened to certain presidential candidates in the United States, you'd think the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And in fact, at least in, in uh, North American Western democracies, we were probably in the least violent time in history, mm-hmm. in, in, in even beyond history, in human humanity, history of humanity. Uh, and so anyway, kind of interesting. I've been reading that, but also at our last club meeting, Carrie Trainer, one of our members, brought in a whole bunch of books to get rid of, and I picked up this one called "Spies in the Sky," no. amongst others, and it's a uh, secret battle for a- a- aerial intelligence during World War II, and it's about how, you know, in World War One. Planes first first became interesting, and uh, the main reason planes were interesting was because that they gave you a new high ground to spot for artillery. That was the, that was how planes started being used, mm-hmm. and that turned into um, the art of aerial photography and the art of aerial photographic interpretation. And at the end of World War One, the Brits disbanded all of their people who had any of that knowledge, and they completely and promptly forgot about it. And Oops! <laughs> World War World War Two came around; they had to reinvent the whole thing. And it was almost like a, a Bletchley Park kind of thing. They had a similar s- setup where they had a mansion out in, the, out in the woods somewhere filled with people, all interpreting photo, uh, photographic aerial reconnaissance, hmm. shot from unarmed planes that had been stripped down to the bare bones. So That's they, right. They, they could just basically fly and take a picture and fly back. And get the hell out. Exactly. And get the hell out. It's a fascinating story. It's really kind of interesting. And what's cool. most interesting to me is, and a bit frustrating, and it probably is the same in any military history, is just how boneheaded senior leaders were in the military mm-hmm. when it came to trying to uh, accept or take into take into consideration uh, newer ways of thinking about things. Yeah. It's, it's just remarkable. Just remarkable. Definitely. Definitely. Okay, from Terry, he finished Madeline Murray's Song of Achilles. It's brilliant. She really brings the Greek characters to life, all those legendary names. I started to wonder how she would finish the story since the narr- narrator, anyone? Patrick? Patrick. Patroclus. Patroclus, thank you, must die before Achilles. 
The end will bring you to tears. What's next? The 18th volume of That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime. So that's a background read. I have some nonfiction to choose from. <laughs> you got to love that name for, mm -hmm. for a comic. The Time I Got Reincarnated as a slime. a slime. And it's yep. up to volume 18 at least. So you know it's popular. I'm just mm -hmm. saying. Frank, what about you? Uh, I'm in book two of Edmund Morris's fantastic trilogy on Theodore mm -hmm. Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you've never read it, fascinating guy. It's on uh, my so list. It's on my to-do read list. Uh, well, I'll get them to you. So I'm reading Theodore Rex right now. And then um, I have a friend I talked to, and, and we were talking about Passover and stuff like that. So he was celebrating Passover. And I was at the bookstore, and it was like I found two books I wanted because uh, I'm in that Cold War and that sort of, you know, yep. era. So I had History of Israel, which I've always been – interested in and i've read some of the military history and there was one on iran iran it was 500 years israel was you know 60 years uh, mm -hmm. so i went with the history uh, of of israel i'll read that and i'll pick up the other one afterwards because i'll end up buying it anyway but uh, Chantel was actually at a couple of goodwills because you know Stuart, how profitable that is for us that can be <laughs> yeah so <laughs> once I, in a I, while I, once in I, a very blue moon yeah, I picked up a, a few other just some secondhand books to read, and uh, uh, but I'm really enjoying these two right now. Uh, Good. But, yeah. Excellent. Okay. Now let's talk about Sean's custom model tools. Here we go. Now we're going to talk a bit about Sean's Custom Model Tools, one of our other sponsors of the Scale Model Podcast. Some very cool things, both 3D printed and the Goodman Super Sanding Blocks. Let's start with the Microset and Microsole Decal Set Bottle Stand. This is uh, purposely designed for the Microscale Set and Sole. Uh, most modelers over the years, they've tipped these bottles over. So uh, this is a very handy thing. At fourteen ninety five, you can uh, put them both together. They're printed in blue and red for easy identification. Comes with a black base, and they actually have little magnets on it, so it helps keeps them in place. Definitely a good deal. I use mine all the time, and I can well recommend them. Let's talk a bit about those Goodman Model Super Sanding Blocks, namely the Value Pack Combo for $28.99. You get the 80 grit, 180 grit, 220, 320, 400, and 600. Uh, just an amazing set. Uh, just what you need. And you can also, uh, if you want, you can also get a, a sanding, super sanding block stand for it, which also uh, really makes life a little bit easier, helps, helps things keep it organized. The other thing, too, is they have, they have the awesome model tape dispenser for uh, your various tapes it's basically a 3d printed thing you put spools of your tapes it's got a little razor blade to help uh, cut it and it's a uh, really really good design uh, so yeah works out really well and yours for 1995 so check out these and other amazing deals at sean's custom model tools.com and uh, also on facebook and tell them that the scale model podcast sent you all right, things we've seen. Um, we have part two of that build guide of our Musuru Cup Ural as he uh, paints it and details it and all that. It makes it look way too easy. I'm just saying. Um, but, <laughs> you know, that's fine. I'll, I'll live with you're, it. You're, you're still wounded. You're still I, yep, wounded. And, but you know what? Andy King made it made it look really good. He's got some good stress. Yeah, he's got some he's got some good details there. Talks about the issues he had with the kit too. So it's nice to know it didn't go perfectly for him as well. Um, wow. And he also put the entire digital camo on the yeah. decals. He had what a dozen of us making it for him ahead of time. So probably we, just, we made it easier for him. Yeah, <laughs> that must that must have been it. It does look good. You know, you got to admit with the weathering and that, mine didn't look that good. I don't know. Mine, I don't know. Mine got a silver at amps. Very good. Yours, I thought, I, th I thought you were robbed. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I, I'm I'm taking it to Nats. I will Good be bringing you. the Moosaroo Cup to Nationals. Absolutely. Good for you. Good yeah. for you. you okay. And then who put this JPO reestablishes contact with Voyager? Was that you, Jeff? Or no, was that but Terry? I'm betting it was Terry. Yeah. So, yep, that, JPO that's did. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, Voyager won. They've uh, figured out what's going on. So they're doing a little bit of pre reprogramming. You got to remember, it takes 22 hours to send a signal out there. And then, of course, 22 hours to, to come back. So... You yeah. know, every now and again, I read the news feed and I despair uh, uh, about humanity. Yep. 
And then I think about Voyager and I think, yep. you know what, if that's all we ever were able to accomplish in our history as a, as a species, that's pretty damn good. That's and, you know, damn good. and, 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 you know, if there's any mi- m- microbes inside Voyager, I bet they're quite happy. They're there and not here <laughs> <laughs> at times. Really pretty, pretty damn now, cold right now. Now, I don't want to say this was foreshadowing, but do we need to be prepared for when V'ger comes back? Well, well you know, to, according to certain films, I would suggest we should we do. Yes. But it wasn't Voyager 1, it was wasn't it was it wasn't it Voyager 6 or something like that? So oh, don't, don't get technical. Don't don't, oh, don't, don't sorry. mess with us. Okay. Don't mess with us. All right. Um, I got a there, good line there. <laughs> yeah, but there is a Facebook group called Historical Space Models and Terry's got a few friends in there. So I'll see if I can find the link and uh we'll link that up as well. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Frank? Anything else you have to say or uh, no, no. I, uh, you know what? I'm uh, glad I could help out and and uh, appreciate show. that. Always like hanging out with you two. I won't admit it. Well, I just admitted it publicly. Damn it! No, see, no, and now no, millions. No, we'll, we'll edit that out. We'll edit that. We'll edit out. that out. <laughs> must must be it. We all no. we almost have. We almost owe you this bill, and we have quorum. You know, um, I'm, I am IPMS national director. I will be at AMPS Nationals. I'm looking forward to. Uh, seeing you know our canadian members down there um we're trying our our our, um, chapter and member liaison is trying to organize a bit of a canada day uh event i am meeting with uh vic vargas and phil from uh, ipms mexico ipms canada good Good. we're gonna have a little chat uh and um so hoping to get you know a little canadian meet and greet sort of what they do at wonderfest started yeah there's one thing you got to do for us what's that because i forgot to mention it to you after heritage con so Jim Bates, because as you know, our good buddy Jim yeah. Bates, he serves on both boards. So he lives in the Seattle area. Well, I heard that he couldn't make it to Heritage Con because he said he'd have to go to Vancouver and all that, or it might be too expensive. Um, apparently, there's a direct flight into Hamilton Airport from Abbotsford, which is even closer to where he is. So so you make sure you mention that next year we expect his presence at Heritage Con. He's going to be at nationals. I will yes, tell him I know face he is. to face. Yep. I know he is. So we, you know, because he, he attendance was taken and he was missed. I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying. There are yeah. a lot of good flights out of Hamilton, frankly. Yeah. I mean, the downside sometimes is the hours of those flights are pretty stupid. Yeah, that's, that's fine. It. You know, you know, Same but like see, but see again, isn't is it isn't Jim another one of those lawyer, lawyer guys? So they should be used to that. He is. <laughs> I will never slag another lawyer except Perhaps some south of the border. Who knows? <laughs> well, we have several in the hobby. I'm just saying, and quite a oh, few yeah. that do podcasts, right? So go figure. Okay, just like to talk. That's why. That's must be it. Okay, we're also sponsored by our good friends at Return to Kit Form. You looking for a canopy mask for your Macross stuff? Go check them out. They got a lot of cool stuff there out of Australia. Perfect for all those Valkyrie kits you're you're going to be building. Uh, so check out their web store at return, the number two, kitform.com. Tell them the Scale Model Podcast sent you. For more modeling podcast goodness, check out the other modeling podcasts at modelpodcasts.com. And we just added a brand new podcast, gentlemen. We added, I got a nice email. We now have the Scale Model Par, Par Podcast joining the fine collection of uh of people there so if you're into building model cars they're there they've got quite a few episodes under their belts and uh they enjoy our show as well so don't forget yep leave us a positive review if you enjoy what we're doing we're on facebook the youtubes and of course our very own website best show notes around just just remind everyone again scalemodelpodcast.com we got merch check it out on 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 red on red bubble as well so hey Who's we don't have do... Terry tonight. I know. Frank, are you able to do a little something funny to end a little tagline like Terry does? Keep your clothes on. Keep your clothes on, please. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's my OnlyFans page, Jeff. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Your membership. You All right. Get... Let's just see what let's just see what happens. We'll have Jeff go second we'll have, <laughs> and we'll let Frank follow it up. So for episode 139, my name is Stuart Clark. Uh, I'm Jeff Highland. And I'm Frank Donati. May all your sprugu go where you want it to. Oh, Perfect. see, we have don't a, get it, don't get it stuck in those difficult spots. There oh, you like go, the, like there the windshield. Oh dear, <laughs> thank you and be well. <laughs>